All right. So there's two. The, the English word love, in the Greek, there's many words to express that. Uh, Greek language was a lot more richer, a lot more clearer, a lot more correct, we could even say. Um, but in this passage we're going to be looking at, there's two words. One is the word agapeo, and it means this. A direction of the will and finding one's joy in. Let me say that again. A direction of the will and finding one's joy in. And then phileo is the other word that's translated love in this passage. And it just means this. Having common interests with another to be friend. Does there seem like a difference in those two definitions? We can say we love somebody, but is it different to just be have a common interest in somebody and, and being their friend? Or actually having a direction of your will towards them and finding your joy in them? Is there a direction? Uh, is there a difference? By the way, you should know you can speak in church and it's okay. Is there a difference? Yes. Okay, thanks. Alright, well, as we get into the Word this morning, why don't we read uh, John 21. And just a few verses this morning, 15 through 17, we'll read and then we'll pray and ask God to guide us. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Shepherd, my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, or son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. <coughs> Dear Holy Father, as we look at your word this morning, I pray that you'll help us to understand it, understand you, understand our relationship with you, and just help us to get what you want from your word this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is a challenge. We've got to get a little bit of the context, I guess, because it's been a few weeks since we've been there, and some of you may not have been here even then, is that Jesus has died on the cross, been buried, He's rose again from the grave, three days later, three days later and then He's been seen like at least three times by His apostles. Um, at different times, He walked into the room a couple of times, through, through, not through the door, but through the wall. And he said, peace be with you. They're probably a little freaked out. But then he's, then now, he's come to them in the passage just before this, the verse just before this, he's, he's been on the side of the sea, and he hollers out to them, and they don't know who he is, and he tells them, they've been fishing all night, they have not caught one fish, and he tells them, put your net on the other side of the boat. I don't know what was going through their mind, they didn't know it was Jesus on shore at that moment. All I can think of is what they thought is, well... We tried everything else. One last try before we go in to the beach. Uh, so they did it. And do you remember what happened? The, the net was so full, it, was, it wasn't breaking, but it was so full that they could hardly hold on to it. And then one of them realized that it was Jesus who had been speaking. And when they get to land, not only is he there, but he's got a fire going, and he's got fish and breakfast going, and he feeds them. And they have some fellowship together. That's the context that we get it, that we're in when we come to this verse. So when they had finished, in verse 15, breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? The message title this morning is, More Than These. Jesus has a challenge. Well, let's think of, what does he mean more than these? What has just been going on? What have they just done? They've just captured a bunch of fish. Do you love me more than these fish? We say it's kind of a funny question. But what do the fish represent? Do you love me more than the occupation that you've had before? Do you love me more than the familiarity, which we talked about last time, of what you've always done the, the, your life up till now before you met me? Do you love me more than the wealth that those fish bring? Do you love me more than the food that I've just showed, given to you on the fire? Do you love me more than the social standing that being a fisherman would have given you? And the friends and the camaraderie 
in the social gatherings that that would have entailed just being a fisherman on, on that lake. Do you love me more than the comfort? But also, do you love me more than your identity to that? You know, always is about identity. Who, where does your identity come from? It's not really the text of it, but it's for sure something to get from it. And where does your identity come from? It could be a whole other message in itself, couldn't it? Does it come from your workplace? Does it come from the friends that you have and the social gatherings that you do? Where does your identity come from? Does it come from, and, and, and it can come from something negative too, can it? Your identity can be that you're divorced. And you, you take that label with you, and that's who you are as your identity. Identities aren't always a very positive thing. They can be very negative. But when somebody knows Christ as Savior, our identity is supposed to be in Christ, and everything else is secondary. Everything else pales to that one identity when we have in Him. And so Jesus is saying to Peter specifically, Do you love me more than these? Well, Peter's a little said about that, because he keeps asking him the question, doesn't he? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Well, he has a challenge, and why does he do it three times? Well, per on a practical level, what did you say? It's important. it's important. We know the things repeated in Scripture means that they matter, right? Or they wouldn't have been repeated again. It's important. But why else might it have been repeated three times? Because Peter denied Jesus three times. Do you remember that? Peter had just told Jesus, I will go with you where? I will die with you. I will be with you, God. He's told him that he will deny him. And he says, no, I would never do that. And not only did he deny him, but the little servant girl who asked him, you're one of those that went with Jesus, right? And then another servant girl said it, and then, maybe, and then another person did. And three times in a row, I do not know whatever words he used at that time, different ones. I think for sure that's one of the reasons Jesus challenged him that way. Because it was important, because I think he was not only trying to get him to face, it, face whether he loved Christ or not. Do you love me as a friend? Or do you truly love me and you find, let's go back to that agapeo, do you love me as your direction of your will towards me? Jesus is saying, and that you find your joy in me, not in all the other things that life has to offer. Do you think that's a question for all of us? Yeah. Even right now, today, in 2016, do you love Jesus more than, and you fill in the blank for yourself. Hard to do. Well, it is hard to do. Do you love more than these? And I think a good challenge for you is to try to think of what is the these for me? What is the other things that tend to consume me, tend to take, I place my identity in, tend to be where I am truly sold out to, where my will is going towards, where my joy is found in, that aren't Christ? I think Peter, I think Jesus was also trying to free Peter a little bit. Yes, I know you denied me three times. But I do know you love me too. I think it was also a freeing thing. and can't see it there. And Peter did deny him. And I think there's an aspect of the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Right? Didn't Jesus say that? And there was a desire in him to want to, but the will wasn't there. So I think we need to uh, just question a little bit. What is love? Scripture talks about different things that are what love is. Going back, John, back a few ch uh, chapters, John chapter 14. Um, Jesus is saying, you sh you'll show me uh, that you love me by these things. Let's just look at a few verses. 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our boat with him. Chapter 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, abide in his love. 
So, what is love? Is it obedience? Is love obedience? Think about it. Is it the choice to Is obey? love obedience? Yeah. Yeah. The choice to obey? The choosing to obey? I'm not going to answer the, answer the question. But ponder it. Is love, is it keeping the commandments? Let's go back to Exodus 20. Many of you know these. They used to be listed in almost every state house in the United States, but they're not anymore. But Exodus 20. <coughs> the Ten Commandments. And God spoke these words saying, I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven or above or on the earth or beneath it and the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes the name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, and in it you should do no work. You nor your son or your daughter, male or female servant, cattle or sojourner that stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Did you hear that? Anybody who's my child? Did you hear that? <laughs> Honor me and your mom, you will live a long life. So, bonus. <laughs> you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, a female servant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The Ten Commandments. So, is it love if I keep the Ten Commandments? Look at Matthew 22. What are the two greatest commandments? Jesus asked him, which commandment is the best? Or what is most important? What did he say? Love the Lord your God first. So Matthew 22 is where we'll get it. I hear some mumbling, you know, out there <laughs> in the congregation. I didn't really hear it real clear. I know it was there. I heard bits and pieces. Matthew 22 is where it's actually written, one of the places anyway. 37, starting verse 37, and he said to them, well, maybe we should go back one. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the greatest and mo- the great, this is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like to it. <coughs> you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So do greatest commandments. And by the way, if you look at the Ten Commandments, that, those two sum them all up. Mm-hmm. The first four are focused towards God and your love for Him. The last six are focused towards your love for your neighbor. And your neighbor is? Everybody. Everybody. Anybody you happen to run into along the way. Yep. So that even means for you, for you married couples, your husband or wife, that's your neighbor. Back to your closest one. So, is, is love, is it obedience? Is it keeping the commandments? Let me ask another question. Is it sinning less? Is love for God? Because I, I hear a lot about loving God, pleasing God, all this stuff. Is it these things? Proverbs 28, 13 says, He who covers his sins will not prosper. Whoever confesses and forsakes him will find mercy. John, 1 John 1, going back to another book that John wrote. 1 John 1. Many of you know verse 9. We're going to read that and a few verses after it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. My little children, am I writing these things so that you may not sin? And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Does God desire obedience from us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does God want us to keep His commandments? Yes. Does God desire us to sin less? Yes. By the way, you can never be sinless. He helps us. Only Jesus was that. He helps us. But you can sin less, right? <laughs> but is that love? Men's breakfast yesterday, we were in a passage, and we're going to turn there for a couple verses right now, and 
back in 1 Kings that I think is almost a little challenging for us. If you know any of Scripture and, and who it's talking about. 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. I'm going to say, what is God looking for? What does He really desire from us? Is it our obedience? Is it us keeping the commandments? And I know those two could all look the same. Is it sitting less? I want to read. Many of you have heard of King David in the Old Testament. And you remember the slogan that was mentioned of him. What was he called? A man... That was pretty good. Let's say it again. A man... A man after God's own heart. David was known. The only person in Scripture that title is put to is a man after God's own heart. you think that that means that David had a special relationship with God? you think that they had a close relationship? An intimate relationship? By the way, if you read the Psalms, I don't know how many of them, but most of the Psalms are written by David. And it's truly him talking to God. His personal talk to God. You know, he tells God when he's angry, he's, he's right out with him. He tells God when he's sad and he's distraught. He's telling God when he's confused. He's talking to God when, when he says, I don't think it's fair. All those things. He talks very openly with God. And somebody mentioned, you tell them things you wouldn't tell other people. That was mentioned, right? You're willing to be honest with them. You know they'll be honest with you. So that's who King David was. So let's go to 1 Kings 11. And this is David's son, Solomon. And Solomon started out well, but at this point in time, he's not doing so well. So 1 Kings 11, verse 4 through 6. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away from, after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God as the heart of David his father had been. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the detestable idol of the Ammonites, Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as his father had done. What strikes you as odd about that statement? Does not follow the Lord fully as David did. David didn't. What strikes you as odd in that statement? David sinned a lot. I heard a couple things. I heard David sinned. David made some mistakes. Okay, making some mistakes is really being gracious to David, right? <laughs> he mistakenly murdered somebody. Or had somebody murder him. On purpose. Right? <laughs> You're right, he made mistakes, that's sin. Yeah. But he really sinned, right? In our mind, he really sinned. He saw a woman who wasn't his wife, he committed adultery with her, killed, had her husband killed yeah. so that he could be with her. We would say that's, that's a pretty serious sin, when we are a set of sins, right? And that's usually what happens with sin. You, you have to sin more to fix that one, which never gets fixed. That's the deceitfulness of sin. So, wait a minute. The Bible just said, by the way, is the Bible truth? Yes. <laughs> Do you really believe that? <laughs> because what did it just say about David? We said he was what? Fully... Following the Lord. Devoted to God. Fully, what's that? Yeah, but in this context, fully devoted to God. But wait a minute. He sinned. Like, like bad. He's a bad sinner. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> you even thinking that about David shows how self-righteous you are. I'm serious about that. Because to God, all sin is bad. Mm -hmm. And all sin Little sin. There's no little and big to God. Now, does sin affect me differently? If if you lie to me or you murder me, it affects me a little differently. So on a man level, a man level, sin does affect us differently. Mm -hmm. But on a God level, anything that's underneath God's perfect standing is sin. And I'm thankful, and I hope you are too, that God doesn't look at sins as big and small. I mean, that, we may wish he did because we're hoping that if we don't do enough sins, maybe we'll get into heaven. But the Bible's clear that doesn't work. But also, the good thing is that there's no sin too big that we've ever done that'll keep us from getting into heaven. That's the good thing. So, we've got to wrestle with this a little bit. So, I think it fits into our 
text this morning. Do you agape God? Do you, is your direction of your will towards the Lord, towards Christ, and do you find your joy in Him? David sinned. But what did Solomon do? Did you see that? You had to look at the contrast there. <laughs> David sinned, but his heart never left the Lord. Solomon, Solomon, Solomon went on for building the temple and the, and the whole idea of worship. But in the end, it was his heart that left the Lord. It doesn't say his heart came back. We don't know if yeah, we, later, but at this point, we, right? We don't know, but yeah. David always repented when he sinned. So, let's go back to those questions I said. Is love our obedience? Is love our keeping the commandments? Is love our sinning less? God desires us to love Him. And I think this is a big deal. Because when we relate to other people, what do we see? We see their sin. We don't know their heart. And I think this can help us with Lot. Remember that guy, Lot? If you've read the Old Testament, there was not one good thing said about that guy. <laughs> But in the New Testament, in 1 Peter, it says, For righteous Lot was vexed day by day by the wickedness around him. And we're like, then why did he stay around the wicked? <laughs> but he did. And I think it's a good challenge for us as we deal with people. We don't know where their heart is. We don't know, are they truly in love with God, even though they're sitting even grotesquely right now. God, and I've seen this in people, I've seen two people have the same sin issue. But one, you can see, still loves God. They're in the Word. They're praying. They care. Even though they still screw up. Even though they still do wrong. Even though they still, even on purpose, do wrong. But then the other person is cold and distant from God. See, God is not so concerned about our obedience, or even our keeping the commandments, or our sinning less as He is about our love for Him. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And I think that's what Christ is asking you and I right now this morning. Is your will directed towards me? Is you, is you finding your joy in me or in all these other things that the world has to offer? Am I enough for you? I can see Jesus saying, Or do you need something else or feel that you do? I want you to know this though. No matter where you're at this morning, God loves you as much as He could ever love you. Sometimes, and no doubt, if we love Him so much, we're probably we're going to obey more. If we love Him so much, we're going to try to keep His commandments more. We're going to Try to sin less. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is your desire for God. That's the core. And so often we can get caught up in the other things as Christians. Mm -hmm. And yes, we look better on the outside. Because we have less sin in our life that's visible. Or we look like we obey God more. But our hearts are all about ourselves. And we're doing it because we want to look better. We're doing it because we want to look like that right Christian, even though we don't really have our heart towards God. I love this passage in 1 Kings because I think it is showing us what God deems most important. And sometimes we get caught up on the other stuff that would happen if the most important being wholly, fully devoted to God is happening. Mm -hmm. Do you love Jesus more than these? Is your heart fully devoted to God like King David's was? Yeah, he screwed up. And you know what? He got consequences for his sin. Right? He, he messed up and his family, a lot of things happened. I mean, God didn't just say, go ahead and sin all you want. You won't have any consequences. But what mattered most to God was not his sin or lack of. It was that he was fully devoted to him. And that's what it matters to him most for you. Are you fully devoted to God? Do you love him? I want to close.
struggles with the definition. Are you directing your will towards Jesus? And are you finding your joy in Him? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this challenge to Peter. I know it was a challenge for him to get him to make sure he was on the right path, to make sure he was focused on what was what was right, in order so he could tend the lambs, in order so he could shepherd the people. But that was secondary. Primary was, was he fully devoted to you? Was he truly in love with you? I pray for us, Lord. May we have a hunger and thirst for you, Lord. Not to just look good before you, but to just truly love you and to find our joy in you. Show us, Lord, the things that maybe we're getting our fulfillment in other than you or instead of you. Show us those areas that are getting in the way of us being fully devoted to you. Those distractions of the heart. Distractions of the mind. And as we go forward in our theme for this year of truth, help us to want to know truth. Because we want to know the person of truth, and that is Jesus Christ. Lord, guide us this morning.